shattering and splashing. So instead of a bouncing hole, uh, when you, you have a, an object hitting the ground, uh, the impact may cause a solid object like a brick to shatter, or um, you may have a splash. So if the water balloon happens to burst, then um, it will splash instead of uh, bounce. In this case, we have uh, separate pieces, uh, fragments of the brick, or uh, water droplets which are thrown into the air. Uh, here's some uh, nice drawings from um, Dylan's uh, Elemental Magic. Very, very nice book if you don't have it. Uh, definitely recommend it. So let's look at a, an example here of a brick drop where the brick shatters. So this is in uh, slow motion. So you can see the details. So you see these two uh, fragments happen to break off. Now, uh, in this example, um, it reminds us that uh, regardless of the size of a fragment or the speed of the fragment, uh, each fragment uh, will be a certain time in the air that depends only on how high that fragment uh, goes. So in that example we just saw, there were two pieces that broke off simultaneously. Uh, the small piece happened to go fast but low to the ground, so it hits the ground first. The other piece uh, flies up higher and then it hits the ground uh, next. If you don't have this kind of timing correct, then uh, the different pieces look as if they're uh, moving in, in different gravity. Now, splashing is, uh, as I said, similar in many ways to uh, shattering. So if we have a, a liquid that is uh, striking the ground, then we have different uh, parts which uh, splash up. Uh, we even have uh, splashing with granular materials like sand or, or flour. Um, in this case, we don't form individual droplets, just the uh, separate grains uh, splash uh, on impact with the ground. So in a, uh, a sack drop, of course, if the sack uh, bursts, bursts, then we see this kind of splashing. But even um, when it doesn't uh, burst, just the grains moving and splashing inside the sack uh, give us a noticeable pop-up of the uh, sack on impact. Now, uh, when we have uh, pieces flying off uh, from an object that shatters or droplets uh, from a splash, uh, we want to avoid having uh, unrealistically synchronized uh, motion. So to uh, make these look uh, believable, uh, it requires a certain randomness in the uh, sizes, the speeds, the directions, uh, so forth. So uh, often the smallest pieces tend to fly off faster, but that's not a hard and fast rule. So we want to have a uh, natural um, randomness in uh, a splash or a shatter. Now, uh, when we don't have that randomness, then it's very distracting and in um, animation this is uh, called twinning. So one of the reasons that uh, patterns are distracting for us is that uh, we have a very, our brain has very good pattern recognition. And so uh, even when uh, something is fairly camouflaged, uh, we are still, uh, our brains are wired to, to detect patterns and uh, that tends to be distracting in, uh, in animation, um, you know, unless you specifically uh, want to have that pattern. So uh, the same thing, since we're talking about 20, and the same thing happens in character animation. If the character's motions, say uh, what the character is doing uh, with their arms as they're talking, if that motion is too symmetric, then it's distracting and, and sort of resembles uh, cheerleading. So 
Uh, this is uh, what's, as I said, called twinning in uh, animation. Now, getting back to uh, splashing and shattering, suppose we have a bucket of water and we take that bucket and we drop it from a certain height. Now, we ask the question, is it possible for some of the splash to actually uh, rise higher than the height from which we drop the bucket? Okay, so could some of the droplets actually uh, reach a greater height than where we drop the bucket? And uh, the answer, it turns out, is yes. And the same thing with uh, fragments from a shattered object. Some of them can reach a greater height than from where the object uh, was dropped. Uh, let's look at a quick video of that. So if you um, look carefully, you see that in this uh, splash, uh, there are several droplets here that are um, going over my head, um, much higher than where I uh, released the can full of water. And in fact, if you look very carefully, you see that some actually go uh, quite high. Uh, they're circled here in red. Now, to understand how this is possible, uh, consider this uh, demonstration where I'm dropping uh, a ping pong ball that is above a golf ball. So I drop them together. So here you see the two of them, and I drop them. And you see clearly the ping pong ball is rising much higher than the original height that it's being dropped from. Let's do one more time. So what's going on here is uh, the two of them fall together and uh, the golf ball happens to hit uh, first because it's, it's um, on the bottom uh, and it strikes the ground. It's now rising upward. The ping pong ball is coming downward. Of course, this happens very quickly. Uh, so now uh, the upward motion of the uh, golf ball, which is much heavier than the ping pong ball, it's almost like a baseball bat being swung and striking a baseball. Uh, so in this case, the uh, speed of the ping pong ball uh, is much higher than it would be if the ping pong ball simply hit the ground uh, by itself. And uh, if these are all perfectly elastic, then the speed of the ping pong ball could actually be magnified uh, three times larger, which leads to the height. Uh, it, again, if everything was perfectly elastic, the height could be up to nine times higher. Uh, here's a very similar uh, demonstration, but even more exaggerated. So the um, we have a, a stack of elastic uh, balls and the little red one uh, sits on that stack and so it's the same same thing we saw with the golf ball on ping pong ball but it's just a ball hits ball hits ball and then finally the red one uh, flies off extremely uh, fast. You can find this uh, toy in uh, toy stores. It's a lot of fun. So in uh, summary, uh, instead of bouncing, a solid object may shatter into fragments and um, something which is liquid like a water balloon may uh, splash uh, into uh, droplets. Uh, the time in the air for the fragments uh, or the droplets uh, only depends on how high uh, they go. Uh, shattering and splashing should be irregular Otherwise, it's going to look unnatural, and uh, that's referred to in animation as uh, twinning, when two things seem to be synchronized uh, in an unnatural fashion as they move. Uh, and the height reached by uh, some of the fragments or some of the droplets may exceed the original height from which the, the object fell. So 
uh, that actually makes it look even more natural to have a uh, splash like that. Of course, uh, whenever you're doing these, these um, types of animations, uh, shoot as much reference as you can, and uh, because sometimes things uh, are surprising in nature.